beautiful day for Mother's Day. And special, uh, we want to especially welcome our visitors who are with us today, who are here visiting in the church or online. We uh, welcome you, and please let us know you're visiting with us. We've got a card we'd like for you to fill out. We'll reach out to you if that's all right. A few announcements. Monday mornings in Inman at Hardy's, you can come and enjoy some fellowship and coffee from 8.30 to 9.30 with your church friends. Um, we have some special things today. It's our special Epworth uh, collection, our offering. And in your bulletin today, there is a, a pink and or a peach envelope that um, you should put your offering in there if you would like to contribute to Epworth. All of the gifts that were received um, will go to Epworth. And we would like to have a minimum goal of $6 per member so that we can surpass our goal and to help advance the ministry to the children um, and to our conference. So please consider doing that. Um, and that will be placed in the offering plate during worship today. We will have a full church council meeting Tuesday evening on May 16th, this coming Tuesday, 6 p.m. in the fellowship hall with all committees reporting. So plan to be there if you're on a committee. Okay, if you're on that uh, on church council, administrative council. Don't forget next Sunday is Shiloh Homecoming. And we will have a picnic lunch on the grounds at 1 o'clock, followed by our, our usual worship that we do and song singing and things. If it rains, our picnic will be held here in our gym. Okay, hopefully it won't rain. Uh, we do have a flower calendar posted if you would like to sign up to bring flowers. Our flowers today, our beautiful flowers, were provided by Doug and Jean Wilson in memory of their mothers and in honor of their 63rd wedding anniversary. And they're beautiful. Um, we do have a church cleanup coming up Saturday, June 3rd. We need some people to show up. So we can do our church-wide cleanup, both inside and out. So if you have a preference of something you'd like to do, or you're good at something in particular, please show up. We need your help. 9 o'clock in the morning until, until we can complete these tasks. And we do this every year, and it makes a big, huge difference on how the church looks. So um, plan on that. If you've got everything. Any other announcements from anybody? Now, well, let us prepare our hearts for worship.
God, take refuge in the Lord who listens when we cry out. Who rescues us when we call, and who leads and guides us according to his unfailing love. You are our God. Our lives are in your hands. Let's worship God together. Amen.
that we might confess to you our sins, that we might walk forward without those thoughts and behaviors in our lives, that we might know the abundant life you mean for us to have in this world. We ask that you would be with all those who are troubled around our world. Uh, there are so many needs. There are those who are hungry and those who are in need of clothing, those who are too hot or too cold, those who are in need of housing, those who are in need of someone's loving kindness. We ask that wherever the need is, you might bring to us a need uh, for which you would have us respond, that as the body of Christ, every need might have a response, that your love would flow in and through us at the level of this world in ways that others might know that you are with them because of the touch of a brother or sister. We're grateful for every mother this day, every uh, kindness that Mother's show and even the men who are nurturing in our lives, we are so very grateful. We ask that you would walk with us, that we might also nurture uh, those around us. We lift to you those on our prayer list, private, collective, and worldwide. And we lift to you now the prayer that Jesus taught disciples to pray when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. We're so grateful for our worship team, and we invite Dr. Ben Taylor, whose name did not make it into our bulletin, but who is going to offer us our Mother's Day children's message this morning. Does that mean I don't get paid to my name? Yeah, no pay today. <laughs> Welcome, folks. Um, being Mother's Day, I'm going to tell you about my mom. Um, scriptures this week are about faith, and we're going to this is entitled "Moms and Wives and Faith." Faith and trust are about the same thing. My mom's name was Mildred. She and I were middle children. She had two older two brothers, Jack and Tony. She liked to play church; was one of her faith, favorite games. <coughs> Mildred was the, always the preacher. One friend was the singer, and another the sinner. She loved to play <laughs> weddings, too. She had some of her mother's wedding dress tucked away somewhere, and she wore it so many times that it was worn out by the time it came her time to wear it. At her class in Brevard, she was a class poet. She was an artist. She wrote two books. Designed her own home. Loved growing flowers and food. She went to college at Marcel, where she was a classmate of Vivian's mother. <coughs> she then went to UNC and became a third grade teacher. I want to read a, a paragraph from her book, When I Was a Little Girl. This was at the end. I must have been growing up. I found that sometimes I liked to be alone, stretched out on the floor of my pretty bedroom with a book or my watercolors or just dreaming. Someday, I will be a missionary to the poor and to die heathens. Her great-grandfather was a Methodist minister. This kind of got her into the, into the church business. I will be a, a nurse and care for all the sick people in the world. I will write a book or paint a famous picture. I will be beautiful, and she was, and marry a rich man with bags of gold and silver. 
Or maybe. Maybe. How old? Mary Philwell. They have five children and live happily ever after. I have great faith in my mom. Faith to feed me at night before I knew that nights were for sleeping and days were for eating. Faith that she would come back from the store. Faith that she would lend me her scissors and her faith in me that I would return them to the sewing machine. Faith that she would lend me her car. Her faith in me that I would return it in one piece. Faith that she and Dad would send me to medical school <coughs> and their faith in me to serve. Now this is the most important part. No matter where you are, or what you do, mom knows. So does Jesus. Our little prayer is the same. Dear Lord, thank you for loving me. Help me love everyone else, including myself. Amen. Thank you, Mary. Amen. as we bring God's tithes and our offerings. Loving God, we're grateful for every gift and we return a portion, knowing you will multiply it for your kingdom right here at Inland United Methodist Church and beyond. In Jesus' name.
our lesson today is from 1 Peter again, this time the third chapter, verses 13 to 22. Who will harm you if you are zealous for good? But happy are you even if you suffer because of righteousness. Don't be terrified or upset by them. Instead, regard Christ the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to defend it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. Act in this way so that those who malign your good lifestyle in Christ may be ashamed when they slander you. It is better to suffer for good, for doing good, if this is possibly God's will, than for doing evil. <clears throat> Christ himself suffered on account of sins, once for all, the righteous one on behalf of the unrighteous. He did this in order to bring you into the presence of God. Christ was put to death as a human, but made alive by the Spirit. And it was by the Spirit that he went to preach to the spirits in prison. In the past, these spirits were disobedient when God patiently waited during the time of Noah. Noah built an ark in which a few, that is eight, lives were rescued through water. Baptism is like that. It saves you now, not because it removes dirt from your body, but because it is the mark of a good conscience toward God. Your salvation comes through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who is at right, God's right side. Now that he has gone into heaven, he rules over all angels, authorities, and powers. The Holy Scripture of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Molly Weasley, from the Harry Potter movies, is what we would call a super mom. She is the magical mom who takes Harry in when school is out and shares her mothering with more than her own family. She is ready, willing, and able to fight for her family and has all the magical tools she needs to do that. None of us are able to, do, to live up to that super mom or super dad status in our family no matter how much we would like to. And while not all of us were born to mothers who were loving and kind, we honor those women in our lives today who did their very best to give us what we needed to make us ready for our lives. <clears throat> Peter's letter to the Gentile Christian community lifts up our being ready to share our faith. When we are asked about our hope in Christ and faith in our Heavenly Father that Jesus always pointed to, we are able, we are to always be ready to speak confidently about that. We are in the courtroom of a world full of those who do not understand why in the world we have hope in what is considered to be our parents and grandparents blind faith. Or another said to me, science has disproved all that that is in the Bible. Why is it that we have hope then in a life, the life of Jesus lived so long ago? Why is it we believe that life lives on right now and is worthy not only of our devotion, but worthy of sharing with others our devotion so that the whole world might embrace our hope and join us in the family of God. In trying to explain my understanding of this, I thought about the healing of a virus. Each particle of virus grows only in the living cells of animals, plants, or bacteria. Wherever the particles live and grow, those virus particles breed more virus particles. To heal the virus, more than just a single particle has to be eradicated. So the healing agent is not affected one by one, but only as the whole population of the virus is eradicated. The same is true of our spiritual healing in this world. 
The God-created cells that we are are infected by the virus of a world that would have us disbelieve our spiritual natures. That is what is meant by being born into the sin of the world. The virus covers our truth like a veil. It is more clearly seen and touched, that virus, it seems, and so the virus seems proof to those not able to see beneath appearances that there is no healthy cell underneath. And so the true life that we're given is missed. What can save us from what seems so obviously true that that virus is who we are? What can correct our misperception? Even Jesus, living a holy life in harmony with God among us humans, was not able to convince all who met him. Our separation from God, our prodigal existence, is not healed by the existence even of this incredibly healed human. But only in Jesus sharing with us God's nature and our own true nature can we begin to see and to understand that there is so much more to us than we can plainly see. Jesus shared not just his faith, but he shared himself. Jesus became involved with humanity as a human one, living among and loving among us. He lived and loved among the lost us so that we might be shown a glimmer of the truth about us and a glimmer of the way we might go back home to our Heavenly Father. Jesus shared with us that we can do what he has done. When one called him good, he responded, Why do you call me good? Only my Father in heaven is good. We are creations of God made in the same substance as Jesus. And while Jesus certainly could have lorded it over us, he did not. Because we as children are dependent on our mothers and fathers who raise us, there is that authority built into that relationship. There is authority built into the relationships of therapist to client, doctor to patient, pastor to parishioner to but if we are to be healing with one another, we will follow Jesus in not taking on authority over others, but sharing our very lives with one another without that false separation of authority. We share, Peter tells us, with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. That is how we praise God. Not by turning around and shooting a spiritual insight right, right back to the Heavenly Father who certainly has given it to us, but by sharing that insight with our brothers and our sisters. In this way, we confirm and shine a light on our infinite oneness rather than persisting in our singular isolation. God is praised whenever any mind learns to be helpful to the whole of God's children. So then, what is the first essential step in the healing of our minds that will bring about the healing of our world, our neighbor, our friend, our brothers and sisters? Peter is asking us to respond to our naysayers with our witness. To do that, there is a first step. It is our willingness to abandon our fear right where fear seems to be called for. Maybe it's someone's attitude or behavior in this early Christian community of Gentile Christians. Their very lives were being threatened by those around them. And so whatever it is that arouses fear in us could be a physical condition we must be willing to abandon the fear and move into that place within us where love, capital L, love, is felt, where God's love is available to us. 
that must be more important to us than reacting with fear. This is essential to the healing of the whole. We are, if we are going to be spreaders of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if we are going to be healers, we would have to make commitment to that first step constantly. We know that's the way it works because that's what Jesus did. Jesus consciously, consciously chose to abandon any inclination to react with fear and instead insisted upon connecting with his ever-present capacity to feel and be the presence of love. It is from that love that Christ can extend a singularity of intent and send out only one kind of messenger from his being. Jesus sent into the world the messages or messengers of energy, the energy equivalent of love. Messengers radiated into the world that are loving. Jesus did that constantly and persistently. We are called to do the same as followers of Jesus. The messages we send out, the messengers we send out, our things, our thoughts, our feelings, and our actions send that energy out into the world from us. What we send out comes back to us with the same energy in which it is sent out. We reap what we sow. Jesus sent out love so that it might return with confirmation of its energy, its intent, and of love's blessing. I'm told that there's no difference between joy and love. So the only possible state of oneness with God and with one another is to be altogether joyous. To heal or to make joyous is therefore the same as to join with and to make us all one. When we are connected as that whole body, all of us cells connected, whole and healthy body of God. God created cells to other God created cells without the virus. We are all part of the body. We are asked to be healed and to be healing. The love-filled messengers we receive from others heal us. The love-filled messengers we send out into the world are healing. It makes no difference to what part of the body and by what part of the sonship, S-O-N-S-H-I-P, the healing is done. The body of Christ, every part benefits and benefits equally. We center ourselves with intentional intentionality and consciously uh, center ourselves in the love of God and from there we are given the spirit gifts to send out into the world love and joy, peace, patience. We cannot manufacture those without being connected to our God. In our human lives, it is just true that most of the time, all of us feel alone. So listen to this. We are being blessed by every beneficent thought of any of our brothers or sisters anywhere. If we remember that, it will cancel out our feeling of isolation. And we will find ourselves receptive to the experience of the love embodied in those beneficent thoughts from others. Those on this earth and those already beyond in spirit form. We will realize just how much value there is in our extending to our brothers and sisters only kind thoughts. We want to bless them in return out of gratitude. When we become consistent in sending out love, others will stop us and ask us to speak about our hope. Our practice is to send out ongoing thought messages, written or spoken messages of kindness, which come from that place within us 
that has access to God's love. And we receive the blessings of those loving messages from all who believe and practice our faith. We don't have to know them individually, the ones from whom those beneficent thoughts come. We do not have to know them individually or they us. The light of understanding is so strong that it radiates out through the sonship, through the body of Christ, and returns thanks to the Father for radiating that sacred joy upon us all. Only God's holy children are worthy to be channels of that divine, beautiful joy. And make no mistake, God does not have any unholy children. So it isn't a classification that maybe we're in and maybe we're not. We, God's holy children, are worthy to be channels of God's beautiful joy. Because only then... Only we are, are beautiful enough to hold it by our sharing of it. I will tell you something. It is impossible for a child of God to love his neighbor except as himself. That is why the healer's prayer, our prayer is, let me know this brother as I know myself. Whether we say the prayer or not, it is a spiritual law. It's the way it works. And so we can reverse it and say, as I know myself, I know my brother. That's just the way it is. So how do we know ourselves at the moment? Are we happy? Are we grumpy? A difficult person, a cranky person, someone having a wonderful day? Whatever way we know ourselves, we have no capacity to see anyone else any differently. And the way we are knowing ourselves is what constitutes those messengers we are sending out into our world and looking for confirmation. We don't attract what we want. We attract what we are. Now, if the messengers are coming from our ego, and in this context, the ego is all that is not God created in us, but created in response to our separation from God. If the messages, messages and messengers are coming from ego, they are as dishonest as our egos are. And so they will always lie back to us when we, they return and confirm to us what they were sent out to find. We have only the ability to receive the messages we send out. When the thought or feeling energy messengers are shared with the world, if we send liars out, they will come back lying to us. If we send out love, love will be returned and confirmed to us our belief about ourselves. In that way, our belief will end up coloring everyone in our experience. So why would we send out anything but love? Let's look honestly at what we're giving out, because in looking honestly, it will help us to make a new choice as to what messengers we are willing to send out. The messengers coming from our ego, from our mutually agreed on definitions, or our misperceptions of the truth, cannot do anything but report back to us that which confirms our own state of being. Let's choose differently. Like a child touching a hot stove, if we want to escape the suffering of those messages we've sent out, and if we wish to escape the confirmation feedback loop of our own suffering, we must find that place of excellence in us so that we might be informed by love about ourselves. In love's classroom, as Peter says, regarding the Christ as holy in our hearts, we will have new messengers to send out, and they will confirm to us our own holiness when they return. 
by confirming to us our brothers and our sisters' holiness. Are we always ready to do that? First, to connect with that place where the Holy Spirit lives. Did we hear Peter say, our salvation comes through the resurrection of Christ. Christ lives, still a cell of the same being of which we are also a cell. Christ shares God's truth with us about ourselves. Now is the Holy Spirit teaching us everything we need to know. Healing happens as we are all healed. We cannot be healed alone. We can do our part of bringing the kingdom of God on earth as it is in heaven. We're invited to do that this morning, this day, by knowing ourselves as God's perfectly created selves, by ignoring the virus that falsely proves otherwise, and therefore knowing every child of God as a whole and healthy cell of the body of Christ. Regard Christ as the Lord, the Lord as holy in your hearts. Whenever anyone asks you to speak of your hope, be ready to speak confidently about it. Yet do this with respectful humility, maintaining a good conscience. May God help us all to live into all that God has created us to truly be in this world and in the spiritual realm. Let us pray. Loving God, help us. It is overwhelming to think that we all must be healed for any of us to be healed. But that is the mission that you sent Jesus to begin. Help us to listen. Help us to be a part of the healing. To send out only love so that our brothers and sisters may know how greatly and deeply they are loved. And that that feedback loop may come to us and confirm to us our own lovability. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please get your bulletins and let's stand and say together what we believe. We believe in God who has created and is creating who works in others and us through the Spirit, we follow in the way of Jesus, celebrating God's presence, living with respect and creation, loving and serving others, seeking justice and resisting injustice, and seeking out hope and peace. We believe every person, regardless of color, religion, creed, age, class, or orientation, is a child of God. We are, we are connected because we are family. We, we gather because we all have something to share. We encourage one another and hold each other accountable. But most of all, we love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Unite our hearts in love to thee, and love to all will reign. That is our message. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.